Okay, that should be going. So I'm with Texas Tech University. My name is Fallon, and I'm here today to tell you guys all about Texas Tech and what we offer academic-wise, campus-wise, athletic-wise, and then I'm going to touch a little bit on scholarships, important deadlines, um, admissions. We can certainly talk tuition if you want, but this red book is going to have everything I'm going to talk about today, and so if I say something and you don't quite get it or you need to refer back to it, it's all going to be in this book, so definitely take this home with you. Now you guys are all seniors, yes? Okay, awesome. Has anyone here applied to Texas Tech yet? Okay, awesome. Have you been admitted yet, or are you still in the process of applying? I'm still in the process. Okay, cool, cool. So you guys still have plenty of time to get the ball rolling. Um, who here has applied to any other universities in general? Okay, perfect. So pretty much the process for applying to any public two or four year institution is gonna be pretty similar, if not the exact same. Now, there's a few different things you gotta pay attention about depending on which university you're looking at. So we'll talk a little bit more on the business end of things here in a little bit, but first um, I'm gonna ask you guys, what, what are y'all thinking of studying? Do you guys have an idea of like what you'd like to do after you graduate college? What are you guys thinking? <clears throat> Law enforcement. Law enforcement, okay, what else? Nursing, okay, great profession, very important right now. What else are you guys thinking? Computer science. Computer science, okay, yeah, that's super, super cool. Do a lot of things with that. Anything else? Who here is just like undecided? Yeah, and that's completely okay. So actually what I'll have you guys do is you go to page 17 in this book, second to last page. That has every major and minor that Texas Tech has to offer. So if you guys look at that, I'll save you the time from counting. There are 150 options before you there. We have things from agriculture to architecture, arts and sciences, engineering, education, business, media comm, visual and performing arts. Um, you know, there's a lot of different things that are gonna be right in front of you guys. So kind of what I always tell students, if you're very torn between like, what should I pursue? Or maybe you just like kind of have an idea, but not something very narrowed down, get a list like the one on page 17. That's a great place to start. Maybe you have a list elsewhere, but get a list and start crossing things off that you don't want to do, right? Because then that means you have a smaller list and it's not quite as overwhelming. If you're looking at that list right now, that's a lot of options right before you. So it might look a little overwhelming at first. So the best thing to do is just cross off what you don't want to do, make that list smaller, narrow it down, and eventually you're going to be left with just a few majors and a few areas and a few disciplines. You will kind of have a better idea of what's best for you. Because really ultimately, it's this is going to be for you, right? You should do and you should pursue what you would like to do. So just a little bit of info there. Before we walk in through this book, I'm not going to take you guys through the entire book, but I'm going to walk you guys through a little bit of it. But before we do that, does anyone have any questions over anything? Okay, cool. So if you guys open the book to page four, flip back all the way to the front of that. Should be the first page that has like the first bit of info for you guys. So that's just kind of talking a little bit on academics and just Texas Tech at a glance really quick. So there's gonna be a few things I'll point out on this page. First and foremost, you guys see a bubble in there that says 40,322. Do you guys see that bubble? That is the current student population at Texas Tech. So do you guys, like have you ever been around 40,000 other people before? Maybe if you went to like a big outdoor concert, or like a big event, like sporting event, maybe you've been around that many people, but basically that 40,000, that's the city of Plainview just twice. So like picture everybody in Plainview, and then double them, and then that's how many students are at Texas Tech currently. And that number is comprised of undergraduate students, which if you come in as a freshman, or if you transfer in as a sophomore or a junior, or if you're crazy and just come in as a senior, which that's not quite heard of, but you know, everything happens for a reason. So if that happens, whatever process you come in, if you're just getting your bachelor's, you are an undergraduate student. So that number has you guys in there. That number has our graduate students in there. So after you get your bachelor's, if you wanna continue on to get your master's, or even further skip to your doctorate, that number has you in there. And then also, does anyone here want to do anything for law? Like be a lawyer, law school, anything like that? Well, maybe not yet, but if you wake up one day and you pull like an Elle Woods from Legally Blonde and you're like, I'm gonna go to law school, we have a law school on our main campus in the city of Lubbock. Does anyone here want to be like a veterinarian? Work with animals? 
no one. Well, maybe one day you wake up and pull in Elle Woods, but instead of law school, it's vet school. So Texas Tech is also opening their own school of veterinary medicine. That one is not going to be in Lubbock, won't be on the campus. That facility will actually be in Amarillo, Texas. Do you guys know where Amarillo is? So we're opening that facility. Now, does anyone here want to be like a doctor? I think I saw, heard a nurse earlier, pharmacist, dentist, optometrist, physical therapist, occupational therapist, anything in like the health professions. We have our health sciences center. If you've ever been to Lubbock, you might've seen the health sciences center. It's a big facility that sits on fourth street, which is one of the main streets there in Lubbock. And the health sciences center is connected to our university medical center, which is one of the hospitals over there. So like, let's say you're a nursing student, you do like your morning classes on the health sciences center side, and then you literally cross the hallway and you walk into the hospital and you can do your clinicals that afternoon. It's all in the same building. And that's the same for a bunch of those professions. Like we have our school of medicine in Lubbock. We have our school of pharmacy over in Abilene. And we also have another school of medicine in El Paso too. And so just a bunch of different areas and a bunch of different locations. Just know that like whatever route you take, whether it's just getting your bachelor's on something that's on page 17 that we just looked at, or maybe you go on to professional school, like law school, um, or maybe you go to vet school, or you go to doctor, like become a doctor, or pharmacy school, or nursing school, whatever that may be, we have options to all of those routes. And so is everyone good with that? Okay, cool. Let's go to the next page. Now this next page is just kind of touching a little bit on the spirits and tradition. So Texas Tech, just like every other university out there, has its own spirits and we have our own tradition. So how many of you guys have been to like a football game or basketball, baseball, volleyball, tennis, maybe track meet for Texas Tech? A few of you guys? Okay, awesome. So I'm sure you guys, did y'all have fun? Like that was a fun time, right? I'm sure you had a blast because those type of events are like the best time ever. And so what's really cool at Texas Tech is that if you're a student over there, like an undergraduate student, like someone just getting their bachelor's degree, you actually have automatic admission to every home game for all sports. So basically what I'm saying is, if you wanna go to a home football game, home baseball, home basketball, track, tennis, whatever the sport of your choice may be, if it's a home game, all you have to do is just show up. And that's it, you're in. You don't have to do anything extra, like everybody else, like the grad students, the employees, everyone else in the city of Lubbock or that travels to these games to come here. Like everyone else has to buy tickets or like season passes or like do a whole thing. You guys as students have the luxury of just like walking right on in and that's awesome. That's gonna be a perk that's for you guys as undergraduates and so if you do end up going to Texas Tech, I recommend you take advantage of that because that's basically you get to go to all those games, no hassle, right? And even if you're not that into football, even if you're not that into basketball, if any of you guys have been to those games, I'm sure, like I said, you had a ton of fun. Those are super fun events, but it's something totally different. It's another story when you're actually a student in the student section and you're part of that crowd and you're part of that culture. It's like a totally different thing. So definitely think about that. Take advantage of that. Should you come to Texas Tech, it's like an advantage that a lot of colleges, um, you know, wish they could do. So we certainly are proud to offer that to our students. Now, something else I'll share with you guys on this page. And um, there's a bubble in there that talks about our 1200 pound victory bells. So has anyone that's been on campus ever heard those bells go off before? No, yeah, you've heard them go off before. So they're 1200 pounds, like big old bells, and they will go off after every Texas Tech victory. Now that's like a victory from the chess team won something to like the baseball team won something. And like, we have a lot of our teams that go to nationals every year in their respected areas. Like for example, our chess team has won nationals. Our basketball team went to the final game, you know, a year or two ago. Our track team goes to nationals all the time. Our meat judging team goes to nationals all the time. And so that's a pretty big deal. So really like whatever it, the area it is, if it's a win for Texas Tech, I mean, you're gonna hear those bells going off. And those of you that have been on campus, you've seen how large the campus is, right? It's actually one of the largest in the country by acre. And so it's a lot of landmass there. So you can hear those bells going off like from anywhere on campus that you're at. And they go off for about 30 minutes after every Texas Tech victory. They did used to go off for 24 hours. And if you've ever heard those bells ring, they're pretty loud. And so Lubbock locals that live around in that area were like, whoa, you know, slow it down, chill out. That's too long, that's too loud. So they cut it down to 30 minutes. But if you ever hear those bells going off, that means we won something somewhere. So any questions about that or anything else I've talked about so far? Everyone's good? Okay, let's go to the next page then. This is a little bit more campus life, student life. This is a little bit more about what you guys will be doing in your free time because 
you guys probably won't be studying for your classes all day, every day, right? Of course, we want you to study as much as you need to study, but chances are, you know, you're going to have some free time here and there. So what exactly are you going to be spending your free time doing? Well, there are a ton of options for you guys. So first and foremost, I'll tell you guys about the residence halls really quick. And we have a rule at Texas Tech that if you are an incoming freshman, you are required to live on campus your first year. Now there is an exemption to that rule and the exemption is, is that if you live within a 60 mile radius of Lubbock, you actually have the choice to live at home if you'd like your first year. Um, and you guys, luckily for you, you fall within that 60 mile radius. And so you guys actually have the choice to live at home or you can live on campus. What would you guys, what would you want to pick? I mean, it's up to you. There's no right or wrong answer. It's just whatever's easiest for you. What would you guys think of pick? Probably campus. Yeah. campus? Yeah, that's something you do have to consider. That's a really good point. So there's pros and cons to living on campus. There's pros and cons to staying at home. Like a pro of staying at home is that, you know, your mom can probably still help you with your laundry. She can probably help you with dinner. Just kind of, you know, it's a little bit nice to stay at home. But then the con is that if you have classes Monday through Friday, you have to drive to those classes, right? You have to commute. That's a lot of gas mileage. That's a lot of miles on your car. And But the beauty of college is that you can build your schedule to really whatever you want it to be. So if you want to have classes Monday through Friday, you can do that. If you want to have classes Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, and not on Friday, you can do that. If you want to have classes only Monday, Wednesday, Fridays, or only Tuesdays and Thursdays, it's totally up to you. You guys being in college, you have the beauty of making your own schedule. Let's say you have a job, you get a job somewhere in Lubbock, whether that's on campus or that's just somewhere else in Lubbock, you know, you can help, uh, your advisor can help you make your schedule around your work schedule. Or, you know, maybe your supervisor or manager can help you make your work schedule around your school schedule. But you guys can definitely kind of work with that. So if you're thinking of living at home, like for sure, for sure, then maybe think about when you're building your schedule when that time comes around. Maybe try not to have classes Monday through Friday. That way you don't have to come to and from Lubbock every single day. Kind of save yourself some time there. Now, living on campus, you guys actually have the choice of 19 different residence halls. Some are like only girl, some are boy only. Um, most of them are co-ed. So co-ed being it's like females only on like one floor, males on the next floor, females on the next floor. Like, you know, they kind of stack them up. Other residence halls will have a female only wing. Other halls will have a male only wing. And so kind of depends like on that, but you're never gonna be like paired with the opposite sex. Does that make sense? Like a girl will never be rooming exactly with a guy. If anything, you might have a guy live above you or below you or down the hall around from you, but never like your actual roommate. Does that make sense? So that's another cool thing. Uh, there's also four different living styles you guys can choose from. Living styles are like one bed on the left, one bed on the right situation, which is like very traditional. You guys can also uh, live in the movable style. So pretty much in the name, you can move the beds around, you can bunk them, you can loft them. Another style is apartment and suite style. So you have the luxury of living in an apartment with the convenience of living on campus. So that's really nice. And then the fourth style is our pod style. Now, if anyone here is thinking about pursuing the honors college, you do have to be an honors student to live in the pod style because that's in the honors residence hall. Being an honor student does have its perks. Is anyone here interested in the Honors College? You guys know of? Okay. Do what? So the Honors College is something a little bit extra you can do. We have 10 academic colleges at Texas Tech, like College of Architecture, College of Business, College of Arts and Sciences, and the Honors College is going to be one of those. A few perks of being a part of the Honors College is that, for example, a huge one is that you actually like get to register when the upperclassmen do. So. When you guys are freshmen on campus, like let's see, for example, registration for students is opening the whole month of November. Seniors and graduate students get to register for their classes the first week of November. Juniors get to register second week of November. Sophomores third week of November. And then freshmen, you guys get the last pick. You're like the last week of November. But if you're a freshman in the Honors College, you register when the seniors and the grad students do. So you as a freshman can have the earlier registration and that means more pick of classes. You're less likely to get 8 a.m. that way, unless you want 8 a.m. and you can be the first to snatch those up. But that's one perk, you get to register earlier. You also have a lot of study abroad opportunities. Does anyone here want to study abroad? If you, where would you like to go? I don't know, I, but I've always wanted to study abroad. Go somewhere, yeah. Where would you like to go? Anywhere. Anywhere, that's good enough. So. Texas Tech has study abroad opportunities for like every single student in any major, any area, but the Honors College specifically, those students all travel together to whatever location they go to. Like I had a friend who was in the Honors College. She's now currently in her second year at medical school. She got to travel to Seville, Spain. And fun fact, we actually have a campus in Seville, Spain. We also have a campus in Costa Rica too. Has anyone here been to Costa Rica before? 
me neither, but I heard it's great. It's super fun. And so she got to go to Seville, Spain. She got to take her classes there and she went with other honors students. And so they are all taking like the same classes over there, you know, whatever the class was, maybe it was like a math class. Maybe it was just like another kind of class that she had to take, but they all take classes together. And then also if you're in the honors college, your classes are usually a lot smaller. So, you know, that 40,000 that I mentioned earlier, that's the student population. So if you are taking like an intro to anything kind of class, chances are there's a couple hundred, maybe if not more students that have to take that same exact class. So you might have a class with a couple hundred people here and there, but you're always going to have a smaller discussion period. But now if you're in the honors college, the hundred people in your class thing will like never happen. The honors classes are usually anywhere from like 25 to 30 students. But if you're not in the honors college, like I said, you're more likely to have a huge, large lecture class, but you're always going to have that discussion period. That discussion period is just an extra class that's tied into your lecture. And so you'll go to your large lecture and then you'll have that discussion period, maybe right after, maybe later that week. But it's exactly what it sounds like. It's not another lecture like your TA is not going to walk in here and say, OK, here's what we're going over today. That's not going to happen. Your TA is going to say, OK, what do you want to go over today? And it's going to be a classroom just like this, desks just like this, a board maybe like that. And your TA is going to say, or your professor will be there sometimes too, and they'll say, okay, like what would you, what do you need clarification on? There's a test next week. What can we go over to help you better prepare? There was a test last week. You might not have done that well. What can we do for you guys to help, you know, your process and just help make sure you're prepared for the next test. So that's going to be the discussion period. So just know, even if you're not in the honors college, you have those large classes, you will always have that smaller discussion period. So that's going to be what the honors college is about. You have those kind of perks right there. So is everyone good with that? Okay, I'll share with you guys some more stuff on that page. Um, there's another bubble in there that says 550 plus. That's the student organizations that we have over at Texas Tech. So honestly, I know it says 550 plus. It's probably closer to around 600 now. So what are some like clubs and extracurriculars and after school things that you guys like to do? Is anyone in sports? Nobody plays sports in here? You guys don't do any sports, really? What do you do? Uh, volleyball, basketball. Volleyball, basketball, okay, that counts. No one else plays sports? What do you do? Basketball. Basketball, is anyone here in like any clubs, in the bands, and choir, anything like that? What are you in? Anime. What is it? Anime. Oh, there's an anime club here? Oh, that's cool. So like, picture like all of that kind of stuff, but at the collegiate level. So like there's like, a, I think you guys, someone was telling me in one of the last classes, you guys have a Spanish club here. We have Spanish clubs at Texas Tech too, but it's at a national chapter, like at the national level, and it's with other college students. And so it's like the exact same thing you guys are doing here, but just at a bigger scale. Like there was a student in one of the classes that was like, I'm super into mountain biking. And I was like, we have that at Texas Tech. There's mountain biking, there's zip lining, there's kayaking, there's scuba diving, there's snowboarding. There's all kinds of fun activities you guys can do through and with Texas Tech. And so definitely think about like what you do now, but just think about it at a bigger elevated scale. Does that kind of make sense? And so like there's that 550, that number isn't just like your basic clubs either. It's like academic clubs, there's service clubs, there's like just kind of different social clubs you can do. Like I know there's a K-pop club. I'm sure there's an anime club. There's a Super Smash Bros club. There's a cooking club and like a scooter club. There's like a craft club, a planting club. I mean, that's there's so many different things you guys can do. And in the events, you go to Texas Tech and you're like, oh, I want to I want to join this club, but it doesn't exist. Like this club is not at Texas Tech yet. You can start your own club. It's incredibly easy to start your own club. That's actually why we have so many clubs is because different students come around every year and they want to start their own clubs for something different. And then that's how it happens. That's how we get more and more and more clubs. And so you can also do like intramurals and club teams. Do you guys know the difference between an intramural and a club team? Okay, do you guys know what intramurals are? So like basically, let's say we split this room in half and like this side of the room versus this side of the room. Let's say you're playing like sand volleyball or something. That's intramural. Picture you guys are all tech students. You basically just play that sport against other Texas Tech students and you call it a day. And they usually have like a tournament. There's like tournaments for all the sports. There's like flag football, there's like basketball. And if you're not playing, you as a student can actually be the referee for this kind of stuff. And so that's fun. I think the referee jobs, um, those are jobs that like you can get paid to referee the intramural uh, stuff. And so that's like intramural. We split you guys in half. This side plays against this side and you're all tech students, right? You play against other Texas Tech students. Now club teams, let's say this side of the room, you guys are Texas Tech students. In the club team, 
sand volleyball, you would actually play against other colleges and other universities. So like this side of the room for sand volleyball would actually go play the WT room and go play against that college. So there's intramurals where you play against each other, club teams where you go play against other universities, and then there's the official teams which are like the actual like sports, right? Like the actual football team, baseball, basketball team. And so there's all kinds of fun things you guys can do like that. So don't think like it's just academics or you can just do a club here and there. You guys can do really anything you want. Do you guys know, you, has anyone, everyone here seen like Harry Potter before, or at least know of Harry Potter? Do you guys ever read the books? Never read the books? So do you guys know, do you know the sport they play? It's like Quidditch, right? I think that's what it's called. So there is like an unofficial, but like a, a club team for Quidditch at Texas Tech. Isn't that crazy? They don't actually fly, but I don't really know how exactly they play, but there is like a Quidditch team at Texas Tech. So if like Harry Potter's your thing, you will see them play and you're like, oh my God, I want to join that it's incredibly easy to get in on that. So to join any club, all you really have to do is just start going to the meetings. And then some of them have dues you have to pay. Others are just like, come sign up, come just join to our meetings. And a lot of those clubs are just like big hangout sessions. They just like share food and they discuss whatever topic they're gonna discuss. It's a very relaxed vibe. You guys really don't have to do much. And then later on, that looks really, really good on your resume. You definitely wanna show that you've been doing a lot of different things. So do you guys have any questions over that stuff? Like the clubs or anything like that? Okay. I'll share with you guys really quick about food on campus. So when you think about like eating food on campus, like college food, what do you think of? A Starbucks on campus. Yeah, yeah, exactly. What else are you guys thinking of? What's like some of the like typical college food you can just like picture? What's like the most typical college food? You guys are probably thinking it. Ramen. Yeah, ramen. That's like basically everyone's got to do that, live that ramen life at least once in their lifetime. And so um, at Texas Tech, a lot of people sometimes that don't really get everything, like they have the idea that the food at Texas Tech, it's just like a little bit elevated, like cafeteria type food. If you've ever been to the campus, you can see that's not the case because we have actually established chains come to the campus. Like, for example, Starbucks. We have two Starbucks on campus, and there's like a halfway Starbucks, and then there's a full service Starbucks with like the merchandise and all the kind of pastries and everything you can get. There's also three Chick fil A's on campus. Do you guys like Chick fil A? If you don't and you go to Texas Tech, you probably will like Chick-fil-A by the end of your first year. And again, those are like full service Chick-fil-A's. Like they have the salads and the macaroni and all that kind of stuff. Like it's not the halfway one. And then there's also, have you guys ever eaten Sbarro's before? Do you guys know what Sbarro's is? It's like a big pizza chain. So we have a Sbarro's on campus. Do you guys know what Fazoli's is? Fazoli's, there is a Fazoli's on the Tech campus. And we're actually one of the first college campuses to have a Fazoli's like on our campus. Like we're one of the first ones to do a partnership with them. Weird flex, I know, but like if you are into Fazoli's, like we certainly got you taken care of over at Tech. Um, if anyone likes barbecue or donuts, ice cream, like gelato, sushi, tacos, any kind of food like burgers, hot dogs, whatever your food of choice is, we have it at Texas Tech. There's so many places. That 30 plus that you guys see in that book, that's a very modest number. That's actually, it's, it's like way more than that by now, I'm sure. That number, that 30 plus has been there since I was a freshman at Texas Tech many years ago. So, and they've added more and more and more places ever since like I've even graduated. And so I know that number has got to be a lot bigger than just 30 plus. And so they're only adding more and more places every year. So if you guys came to Tech this next year, you're coming in at a great time because the barbecue place and the donut place was not there when I was a student. And I was like, I would have loved to be able to grab like a kolache or something before class. Like that would have been great. And now I don't have classes anymore. And now there's kolaches. And so I missed the timing with that one. But if you guys come now, there's going to be plenty of kolaches for you, I swear. Or whatever your breakfast choice is or whatever your lunch or dinner choice is. And so any questions over like the food, the campus life, living? fun organization stuff at all you guys good with everything all right let's go to the next page then so that's on a little bit on the city of lubbock now you guys have y'all been to lubbock before pretty much almost everyone okay great 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 so most students uh, actually i say most but really the number is 78 percent of our new students come from 300 miles or further away so it's not like if, if everybody in this room right here committed to Texas Tech and is like, I'm going to Texas Tech my freshman year. And if all of you guys walked onto campus first day of class in August of 2021, I guarantee you, you probably would never, ever see each other. 
because campus is so big. And there's like this many of you in the room, plus the other 430, 40,300 people on campus. And so that's a lot of other people. So I guarantee you guys probably would never see each other. If anything, um, you're gonna meet a lot of people just from not only the states, but all over the country, and not even the country, you're gonna meet people from all over the world because Texas Tech has a huge international population. We have a whole office dedicated for international admissions because a lot of students all over the world come to Texas Tech specifically because of our international program. So you guys know like Snapchat maps and all that kind of stuff? My Snapchat maps, I mean, that like came out, came out like a year or two ago or however long ago. And um, my Snapchat maps when I was still in college, like everyone, all my friends, obviously we were all in school, so we were all in Lubbock. And now that we've all graduated and everyone's gone back to where they came from, which was all over Texas, all over the country and all over the world, my Snapchat maps look insane. Like it's everyone everywhere. And so that's pretty cool. I'm like, I have friends all over the world. And you can certainly also do that. And the best way to do that is again, just joining clubs, making friends in class, doing all kinds of things. But just know there's gonna be a huge international population at Texas Tech. There's gonna be a lot of cultural diversity and all kinds of really cool things. And so something else that's not really well known is that um, usually like three out of five people you'll meet on campus are gonna come from the Dallas-Fort Worth area. We have a huge market over there in the Fort Worth, Dallas area. And so a lot of people from that area come to Texas Tech specifically. It's kind of weird because then a lot of people graduate from Lubbock and they all go to Dallas. And so it's like flip flop, but that's pretty cool. You guys are going to meet people from all over because, I mean, if you look at that ring right there on that map on that page, 300 miles alone, that's just touching Dallas, San Antonio, Austin, El Paso. Uh, I think it also touches Albuquerque, Oklahoma City. That's just 300 miles. I think there's also a 600 mile ring drawn on there and that touches like a lot of other places. But again, our students aren't just coming from Texas. They're not just coming from the country. They're actually coming from all over the world. And so any questions about that kind of stuff? All righty, so we can go ahead and head to the next page. Let's check the time. Are we doing good on time? Let's see. Oh, actually, I think we are done. All righty, well, if you guys have any questions over anything, definitely feel free to contact us. All our info is gonna be in the very back of this view book, so don't hesitate to reach out, get your applications in ASAP. We'd love to see you guys apply, okay? Thank you, guys. <laughs>